So the new head coach of the Boston College Eagles is one Bill O'Brien, a guy who I talked about recently, a week or two or so ago on this show, as someone who would absolutely consider the Boston College job and absolutely should, and this is a great fit. Why? Because Boston College is a school that is not thought of as a perennial power. They haven't been on the national stage since Matt Ryan was there, however many years ago that was. They are not a big time program in the ACC. But look at where Bill O'Brien has been. His track record is one of success at places where it is not easy to succeed. You might say, well, Penn State's a high quality job. Not at the time. There were some things off the field going on there and Bill O'Brien stabilized that entire situation and then went to the Houston Texans. Do you know what his record was each year with the Houston Texans? Let me read this off to you from 2014 to 2020 when he was fired. He went 0-4 in that COVID year. Things were weird, but okay. So let's uh, look at what he did going into that season. With the Houston Texans, 9-7, and 9-7, 9-7, 4-12, 11-5, 10-6. He won the AFC South not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. He made the divisional round game twice with the Houston Texans. Are the Texans an organization you think of and think, well, that's a great job, great culture, always great players, good management, well run? No, not particularly, because after Bill O'Brien was relieved of his head coaching duties there, it was a cycle of absolute disastrous head coaches, and things were not going particularly well. Then they hired D'Amico Ryans, who looks to be a star. They found their quarterback with C.J. Stroud. But those are not things that Bill O'Brien always had whilst with the Houston Texans. Now, he had Deshaun Watson when he was actually a good football player in the NFL. He's not that great anymore. And Cleveland, you know, got to the same spot or so or a decent one with Joe Flacco. But anyway, Bill O'Brien is someone who has been places where it is not an easy place to win. And he's won football games. But here's something I want to ask you about Boston College. What do you think about them right now? What's what's your perception of what Boston College was a season ago? Did you know that they not could have, should have beaten Florida State with Jordan Travis? Did you know that that happened? Did, did, Did you know that that game took place over there where Florida State was down? Florida State was getting pushed. Florida State was about to be upset and lose their undefeated season and Jordan Travis was there. Do, do you know? Who they were playing? Yeah, they were playing Boston College that particular day. Do you know how the season ended under Jeff Halfley? That was with a win. Over who? Their their fellow ACC foe, SMU. SMU was seen as some as a snub from the New Year's Six game. The opportunity to play Oregon was given to Liberty out of Conference USA instead. SMU was 11 and 2, champions of the American Conference, which along with the Mountain West is the premier group of 5 football conference in the entire country, and they went to play in the Fenway Bowl and and Boston College emerged victorious there. They went 7 and 6 this year. So Bill O'Brien has taken over a franchise that does not have a long track record of winning, the Houston Texans. They have actually never been past the divisional round, is something I heard in the NFL playoffs earlier this year. And boy, they you know could get there one day with D'Amico Ryans and C.J. Stroud, but they, they still have not done that yet. He took over Penn State amidst a, a horrific scandal over there and was able to right the ship and go 15-9 and nine in his two seasons, including 10-6 and six in Big Ten play. And so here he goes to Boston College, which is not a complete and total teardown. It's not a rebuild. Here's something you didn't think you'd say in 2024. ACC Boston College is a better situation to take over as a head coach than Big Ten UCLA. That's crazy on two fronts. Number one, UCLA is in the Big Ten. Number two, how is Boston College a better situation to take over than UCLA? Well, let me tell you. A year ago, they had a guy at quarterback by the name of Thomas Castellanos. They brought in Grayson James from FIU to compete for the starting quarterback position. It should be a pretty interesting battle over there. But at the very least, Castellanos, whose throwing is eh, not the most consistent, he was under 60% completion a year ago, he is a wildly effective runner. And even if he's not your starting quarterback, could be a part of their offense. They also have a 2024 high school recruit. But when a coach leaves, what we think about now in the transfer portal era is, well, who's going to leave with him? Who's going to go? No, no, no one no one is going to do that with Boston College because Jeff Halfley, remember, went to the NFL. 
He, he went to the NFL to be a defensive coordinator. That's pretty crazy, right? But do you know what that means? He didn't have a litany of players going with him. So Boston College has done a pretty good job in the transfer portal so far this offseason. We'll see what kind of movement takes place now that Halfley's gone and Bill O'Brien's in. Some guys might decide, mm, this isn't the coach for me. But Bill O'Brien brings a pedigree of coaching that I think is appealing for, for the guys at Boston College. Because this is a move that you don't just do to raise the profile of your program, you do because you can win at a higher level than you're perhaps accustomed to. And Boston College hasn't had that pop year, you know, that you see from programs that are, you know, bottom to mid-tier teams in a given league where, you know, they pop up like Colorado in the Pac-12, for instance. They were just a bottom dweller, bottom dweller. All of a sudden, 2016, they went 10-2. and two. Boston College hasn't had that yet. But do I think that that is out of the realm of possibility? under Bill O'Brien's tutelage? Not at all. Because this is not a roster that just completed a winning season, mind you. This is not a roster that is going to be completely and utterly gutted in the transfer portal. They have 12 outgoing transfers on the roster. This is not a complete and total teardown. Uh, do you know how many of those transfers, as I record this show, and uh, peruse 24-7 sports that does a great job of keeping track of all this information. Do you know how many of those transfers are going to play at Power 4 institutions? For those listening on podcasts, I'm holding up my right index finger because the answer is one. There is only one player that went into the portal that a Power 4 institution decided this player is good enough to come and play for us. Conversely, they have brought in eight players from other Power 4 institutions, ranging from the Big Ten. They got a player from Illinois, Sed McConnell, along the defensive line. They brought in Jerron Bradley, the wide receiver from Texas Tech. They brought in Jade McGowan, the wide receiver from Vanderbilt, who have had a couple wide receivers, by the way, disperse themselves out into the college football world. They've brought in two former Buckeyes in Cameron Mart Cameron Martinez and Ryan Turner. They, they brought in Treshawn Ward from Kansas State. Eight total Power 5 transfers going from other schools, Power 4, excuse me, from other schools to Boston College. That is a net addition. That is a net gain in pedigree and the caliber of player you're bringing onto your roster. Now, they're going to have to figure out the quarterback situation, but you have got a core of players who just completed a winning season at a place where that is not the easiest thing in the world to accomplish. It's not a top-tier job in college football, far from it. You've got a head coach who, in his two previous stops, one in the NFL and one in college, was not at a place where, again, you had a grand tradition of winning at the time, and he transformed the dynamics around that program and you would bring him into a situation in which you're going to have a competitive quarterback battle, in which you've got the transfer portal available to you. We'll see what they what moves they're, they're able to make in the spring. And you're in a conference. Here's the kicker as to why this can work and why Bill O'Brien, I think, looked at this and said, yeah, this is the right move for me. Bill O'Brien is going into the ACC. At Ohio State, he would have been the offensive coordinator in the Big Ten. But he's in the ACC. A conference where Florida State, in my view, should be the favorites. They've done a great job loading up in their offseason after losing quite a number of players from, from last year's team. Florida State should be the favorites. But Clemson, we're trying to decide if they're capable of getting back to being a perennial 10-12 to 12 win team in the regular season every single year. And after that, mm -hmm, there is a clear and present void in the ACC. It is not a juggernaut conference to go through. I think at the top, the programs Florida State and Clemson are better than what you have at the top of the Big 12. But if you're talking competitive depth, going down the middle run, middle rings, I mean, NC State has done some really nice things under Dave Doran. They were a nine-win team last year. Did you know that? Did you know that? They might have even been a 10-win team. I'm going to have to double-check that real quick because I remember... NC State being a solid team as they often have been. They were nine and four a season ago. Nine and four. Pretty, pretty darn respectable, as is often the case for the Wolfpack. They lost to Kansas State in their bowl game. They were playing to win a 10th game. I'm just saying, as good as NC State has been, they have been really solid. There aren't that many teams in the ACC I trust. 
So you've got a coach coming into a solid situation with a track record of winning, with the team's returning starting quarterback, I believe still planning to be there next year. But if not, they've got a transfer coming in. They've also got a three-star recruit in the 2024 class if they decide to go that route. And you're playing in a conference where, look, maybe Miami pops in year three under Mario Cristobal. Maybe North Carolina finally gets over the hump, though, without Drake May. I seriously doubt it. Maybe Malik Murphy and Manny Diaz at Duke are able to surprise people. Maybe those things come to fruition. But the opportunity at the very least is there. When you have introduced three new teams, and they include SMU, Stanford, and Cal, neither one of which was a power from where they came from, because SMU literally wasn't playing Power 5 football, and Stanford and Cal were middle-to-bottom tier teams that are rebuilding, there is an opportunity for Bill O'Brien to work at Boston College and deliver quality seasons, and they can make more noise than you might think right now. Appreciate everyone listening. I'll see you next time. And until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.